I mentioned earlier that shell companies are often used for money laundering and to hide uh, you know, the, the source of funds or to move assets around in, in ways that aren't tracked very well. Well, because of this, we have a special rule and it's the beneficial owner rule and we are applying CIP. So you have a customer that's a legal entity, but we're expanding some of this CIP requirement to the owners and the, uh, the beneficial owners of these companies. We're going to talk in just a minute how that all works, but I just wanted to cover high level this. It's kind of a pyramid of what your customer due diligence program needs to look like and, and how it works. So if you hear some of these terms in the future, you'll kind of be able to process, okay, CIP, that's the who, CDD, that's the what, where, when, why, and how, enhanced customer due diligence. That means we're talking about a higher risk customer and beneficial owners. Those are the owners or the people who are, who are kind of the heartbeats behind a legal entity, who are the people that are actually running the show there. So those are the four main elements of your KYC or know your customer program. But let's, let's break it down and let's go to page two and talk about your customer identification program. Now, the government requires and, and, and your bank procedures have a requirement for a lot of years now where anytime you have a customer who is opening a new account, so that's either they're, you know, they're, maybe they're opening a new deposit account or maybe they're applying for a loan where you're gathering certain information about that person to make sure that you know, you know who they are. And then you're taking another step. You're actually verifying that information. So I come in and I give you, and if you look at number A1 there, I give you at least these four bits of information. I give you my name, physical address, uh, date of birth and tax ID number. So I provide that to you. 